this one as well, so you'll have it available. So this is the next unit, and this unit is on energy and power. Now, we touched a little bit on power, but again, we're going to go and look at, at it in a little more detail to develop a more comprehensive understanding of both energy and power. So let us begin with this. So somebody uh, here is um, kind of indirectly answering the previous question about whether there's a relationship between force and work. And you see here what the relationship is. But before I get into that, let's take a, a quick look at the notion of energy. So energy is described or defined as the ability to do work. Energy is measured in joules. The unit of, for energy and work is the joule. And just don't get confused. Energy and work are interchangeable. They really have the same implication. Now, in the world of physics, work is expressed by this formula. Work equals force times distance. And you see here that force is, in the world of physics, is measured in newtons. And distance is measured in meters. Now, in the world of electronics, this is not particularly interesting. In the world of electronics, we look at this formula or this version, where we say work equals voltage times charge. So this is the one that is of primary interest to our field of study. Now, this I see that this is particularly a bad slide here. Uh, doesn't show up very well. So I think what I'm going to do is if you open this up in uh, your black in your PowerPoint, it's on, on Blackboard, you'll be able to see it more clearly. I'm just going to talk through it, um, and hopefully you can make sense of what I'm explaining here. Power. Power represents the rate at which energy is used. So it is the rate of energy consumption. Okay, that's the basic definition of power. Power is measured in watts or kilowatts. If you have a lot, a big power source, we usually use kilowatts. Power is designated by the letter P. And the relationship that we have between energy and power is P equals W, or energy, over time. So you see that power equals the amount of energy used over a given amount of time. So I could say that one watt of 
power. Let me let me make that a little clearer for you. So let me make a little more room here. So power equals watts over time, not watts, work over time or energy over time. So I can say that the unit of measure for power is watt. So I one watt equals one joule of energy per one second. Okay, again, just another definition and another formula. We can see how these are applied in a moment. Well, wow, this one is really messy. I apologize for that. That's what happens when these things get uploaded sometimes to Blackboard. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is uh, switch application and actually work off of my something else. So just give me one minute and I'm going to open it up for you so you can get Okay, I'm going to have to just uh, flip my applications here. So I'm going to stop sharing this one and I'm going to go and share. Something my my actual application. Just bear with me for a moment while I switch everything over. All right, and I'm going to share with you my PowerPoint screen so you can actually see what this should actually look like when you open it up. All right, so look at the, the, the only problem right now, I don't have anything that I can scribe with. So I'm just going to have to verbally walk you through this. So the first line here, it says if P equals W over T, then we can say mathematically that W equals P times T. Now, we, on the second line, we, we have here, since power is measured in watt and time is in seconds, energy can be expressed as watt second or a watt hour or a kilowatt hour. Now, as I said earlier, when we're dealing with high wattage items like appliances, your stove, things that use heaters that use a lot of energy, then we use a kilowatt hour because it's more practical. So kilowatt hours is used for appliances that use large amounts of energy. So at the bottom of the screen, there's a, a little example here. It says, first of all, what is the energy used in operating a 1200 watt heater for 20 minutes. And you see the solution on the left here. So if the, the power of the unit is 100 watts, we can convert that to 1.2 kilowatts. And if the amount of time we're operating the unit for is 20 minutes, we convert that to hours. And I ju we just did it in practice to one third of an hour. And we want to know how much energy is used to operate this particular device for 20 minutes. Then we multiply 1.2 kilowatts by one third of an hour to get 0 0.4 kilowatt hours. That's the first one. The second one is the same question. What is the energy used in operating an appliance of 1200 watts, a heater for 60 minutes. Well, we do the same thing. 1200 watts is converted to 1.2 kilowatts. 60 minutes is one hour. 
So if we multiply 1.2 kilowatts by one hour, we get 1.2 kilowatt hours. Okay, so this is just a using the same the power equation of P equals W over T and rewrite it in the writing it in the form of W equals P times T. All right, so let me break out of this. I want to return back to sharing my original file so I can write. And let me just get back to the slide that we were on was this messy one, and now we'll go on to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so what happens with power specifically in an electric circuit? So here we have our, our voltage source connected through a load, which is some kind of resistant, resistance, and connected back to the negative side of the battery. And you see that the resistor creates some form of heat over here. That's the byproduct of when you put electricity through a load. You get heat. Now, there are basically three forms of the equation that we use for power in electric circuits. They're referred to Watt's law. The first form says power equals the current times the voltage in the circuit. So in this case, if we knew I and we knew V, we can calculate P. The second form is P equals I squared R. And the way this is derived is by substituting, if we were to, in the first format here, if we replace V by I over R, then we, that would give us this form. And the third form is P equals V squared divided by R. So in the first case, if we replace I by V over R, that gives us the third form. So these really are one equation, this one here, just written in different ways by manipulating the variables. Or through substitution, we can write the others. But those are three good formulas to know. And you might say, why do we need three? Well, because depending on the information you're given, one of the options is a better choice for solving the problem. So here's a couple of examples for us we're going to try to find the power in an electric circuit. Here's example one. What power is dissipated in a 27 watt resistor if the current is 0.135 amperes? Well, this is a typo here. This should not be watt. This should be ohms. That's, that's better. The, the question as it was written didn't make any sense. What power is dissipated in a 27 ohm resistor if the current is 0.135 amperes? Well, in this case, we know the current and we know the value of the resistor. So the best format is this one here. P equals I squared R. Here's the current, here's the resistance. And if you punch that out in your calculator, you should get 0 0.49 watts. If we look at the second example, in this case, the question is what power is dissipated by a heater that draws 12 amps of current so we have the current and from a 120 volt supply. We have the voltage. 
Now get in the habit of knowing how, how to visualize these circuits. I think that is very useful. So what would this look like to you? Well, we have a battery plus minus. And this battery is connected through a heater. So here's my heater. I'm just going to show it as a resistor. resistor. And that comes back and connects to the negative side of my battery. So I know my supply is 120 volts. And I know that the current going through here is 12 amps. That's what my circuit would look, so, would look like practically. So in this case, we know voltage, we know current. So in this case, the best formula to use is P equals IV. We plug in the current, we plug in the voltage, punch it out, and you get 1,440 watts. Let's look at the third example. What power is dissipated in a 100 watt resistor with five volts across it? This doesn't make any sense either. That should not be watts. Again, that should be ohms. Now it makes sense. And if I had to sketch this out, it's very much like the other ones. There's five volts being applied. So here's my battery. There's a resistor. In this case, I know that R is 100 ohms. And I know that V is five volts. So in this scenario, this would be the best format of the equation to use. And there's my voltage, five squared. There's my resistance, 100 ohms. You punch that in and you get that many watts, 0.25. Now, I talked about resistors and their power rating very early in, in the course. I'm going to revisit, with it, revisit it with you today just to make sure that we're clear on this. When you go out to buy a, re, a resistor, remember I said that there are two things you need to be mindful of. Number one is what is the resistance value you need? How many ohms for your resistor? The second thing is, what is the power rating? You need both of these to be correct in order for your, your resistor to function properly. So let's look at, a, at some information here and see how we make use of this information. We begin by saying power rating of a resistor is the maximum amount of power that a resistor can dissipate without being damaged by excessive heat. So that's very important. We note that the power rating is directly related to the surface area of the part. So the bigger the resistor, the bigger will be the power rating because it has a larger surface area. So you'll note here, the surface area is given by the length of the part, 
however long it is, the body is, multiplied by the circumference of the body. So if we multiply L times C, we get the surface area. And again, the larger the area implies the larger the power rating. So here's a couple of real life examples of uh, resistors, I mean images of real life resistors. <clears throat> so we see we have a very small one here. So maybe this might be one eight rated, have a, a power rating of one eight watts. Power rating. This one maybe is a little bit bigger, might be one quarter. This is a little bit bigger, might be a half. This one is even bigger, might be one watt. Now, typically, they offer these in standard rating sizes. So you can see you can start at the very low end from 1.8, and you can go all the way up to 15 watts, and even bigger ones are available. The idea is when you buy one, you want to by the standard rating ones. Because if you have to get a custom rated one, they would be highly expensive. So you want to stick to the standard sizes. And the standard sizes are here. One eighth, one quarter, half, one, two, three, five, seven, ten, and so forth. So let's see how that we put that into practice. Here's an example. And it says, choose an adequate rating for the metal film resistors used in these examples. So let's look at the first one. Here we have a 10 volt power source. And it's connected to a load that has a resistance value of 120 ohms. The question is, what should be the power rating for this resistor so it doesn't burn up? <clears throat> so remember, going back to our equations, just take a quick look here. We want to use one of these to help us determine what power we need, what power rating we need. So let's go back to that example. So again, here's our voltage. We have the, the resistance value of our load. So in this scenario, the best option is to say VP equals, we know V and R, the relationship we know would be V squared over R. And that would give us V is 10, so 10 squared gives us 100 volts divided by R is 120 ohms. And if I divide this, out, what do we get? Well, if I divide 100 by 120, that gives me 0 0.833 and repeat it. We show it that way. <clears throat> okay, somebody chimed in with that answer. That's very good. So now the question is, what is the power rating we need for this guy? And typically, what we do is this is the minimum that is required. But we, so this is watts. But we never go, to, we would use the, the standard 
sizing, there's nothing that is rated at 0.8. You can get a quarter or you can get one. So clearly here we would say we'll get a one watt. And that's how your answer there is one watt. I don't understand your question. How would you plug that into the circuit? Can you explain your question? So this, if I'm, maybe I'll try to understand this. Remember, this is negative here. This is the plus side of the battery. Let me do it in red so you can see it. So let me, let me redraw the circuit. No, you do not need a resistor that is 0.83. It's got to have a power rating of one watt. The resistance value is 120 ohms. Okay, so remember what I said. You need to know two things about your resistor. Number one, what is the resistance value? And in this case, we know that that is 120 ohms. So this is good. We know that. The second thing you need to know is what is the power rating so that it doesn't burn up or blow up. And that's what this calculation is. We said we don't have 0.8 watts. The standard sizes are what we showed on the previous slide. And the closest one to this is one watt. So if you wanted to go buy this part here and to put it in here, you would have to go get 120 ohm resistor rated at minimum one watt. Does that help you, Jonathan? Okay, let me see. Matthias has a question here. So can we assume that exist resistors with the same resistance but different power ratings? Yes, of course. That's exactly right. So you can get a 120 a resistor, 120 ohms. You can get it with a quarter watt rating or you can get one with one watt rating, or you can get one with two watt rating, or you can get one with 10 watt rating. Now, why would you get one quarter instead of 10? You would get one quarter because they are much cheaper. They all work. This is critical, 120 ohms. And these will all work. But if, if the one quarter is enough, you don't wanna go buy 10 watts because this costs you 10 times more money, 10 times more dollars. Okay? So in this case, uh, determine whether the resistor in each circuit below has possibly been damaged by overheating. So I'll do, I'll do one with you. Let's look at the first one here. So again, we're given, in this case, a battery, nine volts. Here, we're giving the resistor already. He said, they're telling us this is what we're using. 100 ohms, quarter watt. Remember the two things. One, the, the resistance value in ohms, and two, the rating. So we're given both of those in this case. Resistance is 100. 
the power rating is one quarter. Now the question is, is there a possibility that this resistor will be damaged by operating the circuit? So we're going to check. We know the voltage and we know the resistance. So again, I'm going to use the same formula I used before, which says P equals V squared over R. I put in the values. V is 9. Nine volts, and this is squared, divided by R, which is 100 ohms. So here I have volts, here I have ohms, which is good, that's what we want, and that equals, so clearly nine divided by 9 squared, actually, is 81. We divide that by 100. And it says that the power rating should be 0 0.81 watts. Now, what are, they, what are we using here? quarter. Which is point two five watts. So this is what we're using. This is what is required. This is too low. So yes, this is going to damage. It's going to burn up. So that's bad, a bad circuit. No. This should have been at least one watt to work. Because one watt is bigger than 0.81. Usually when we design circuits, we designed the circuit, if we say we need one watt to be safe, we usually go up by, the rule is twice, so we do two watts. But that's not really for you to worry about. Engineers figure out what tolerance they want to use. But for, as far as our application is right here, you would say, this is no good. It's going to burn up. Let's do one more. Let's do the next one. Here we have a half watt resistor equals uh, 1.5K. And the power rating is half a watt from here, one half. My battery, in this case, is 24 volts. So again, I'm going to use, use the same formula. I, I have V and I have R. So I'm going to use the same formula. So I'm going to say P equals. V squared over R, which equals 24 all squared divided by 1.5K. So that's 1,500. 
and on top again we have volts here we have ohms and if we punch that out this is a two here so we do 24 we square that and we divide it by the value of the resistor which is 1500 that gives me an answer of 0 0.3, let me see, 8.4. So let's just call it 0.38 watts. How much do I have? How much? That's equals to 0.5 watts. So 0.5 is bigger than 0.38. So in this case, okay. All right, you can try the last one on your own. And uh, maybe, let me see, one more thing I want to talk about before we take our break today. Um, Here's efficiency of a power supply. Now, in a power supply, again, I apologize for this, is uh, something is overwritten. We have power in. This is P in, I. This is P out, power that comes out. And then, um, from any system, there's always some power that is lost over here. So we put in so much, we get out so much, and some is lost. So we would say P out equals P in minus P loss. Okay, so that comes from this diagram. And if that's the case, we look at something we called what is the efficiency of the of the electrical system. And the efficiency is given by the ratio of P out divided by P in. So whatever we're putting in, whatever we're getting out, we take the ratio. And if you want to convert it to a percent, we multiply by 100. And that gives you the efficiency as a percentage. So in electrical systems, you want this efficiency to be as high as possible. The target is 100. But in reality, there is no system that delivers 100% efficiency. There will always be a little bit of a loss. So if your efficiency is around 95%, 96, 97, really well. Again, that's a problem for engineers, not for you guys working as technicians or technologists, but it's something you want to be aware of. You want to understand what it is, and you want to understand that if you look at an efficiency number of 80%, well, that's not a very good number. The system needs to be improved. All right, uh, it's almost 1.30, so I'm going to stop here with this unit. It's uh, we're, This is the last slide. I will stop the recording for this unit.